Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back. This is a sample video for our latest podcast, episode number 99. We review the brand new film, Endgame 2050. To listen to the full episode, you can join us on Patreon, which is linked in the description below this video. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Hope you enjoy it. See you next time. Today we're reviewing the brand new film, Endgame 2050. It has just been released and it's free on YouTube and on the official website endgame2050.com. It will also be available on Amazon Prime and 2B TV. If you take anything away from this episode or video if you're watching on YouTube, please watch the film Endgame 2050. And most importantly, share it. It's absolutely crucial that non-vegans watch this. It sure is. Now, we've got literally pages of notes here in front of us. It was a 90-minute uh, documentary film. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you know why we're looking down and reading. So I'm going to rename this film either The Truth Bomb or The Mic Drop because, quite frankly, that was exactly what it was. Yeah, to give you an idea of how raw and honest this film is, here are two quotes from an 88-year-old doctor interviewed. Mm. One of the really critical things, the resource that we'll never run out of, is morons. <laughs> and we're acting like idiots because we're the only species that is determinedly set out to destroy itself. I think this film is going to upset people, to be honest. I think it's going to scare a lot of people and it's going to kick them off their human privilege platform. And they're not necessarily going to feel comfortable hearing the truth, but they sure as hell need to hear it. And I think this includes vegans as well, because yeah. unlike most other films that we've reviewed on this podcast show that are focused on animal agriculture and targeted towards carnists, I feel this film was targeting all humans, including vegans, because they discuss topics and issues like human population growth, and many vegans get very upset about this topic. Yeah, so I feel that this film doesn't let vegans off the hook, and sorry for the non-vegan expression. Um, and I'm glad that it did that as well. I think we all need to be held accountable. So out of the 99 podcast episodes that we have, I think this is going to be our most controversial film review yet. I'd agree with you. <laughs> so the film was produced by Sophia Panita Ochoa and Robert Rap Fogel. I hope I pronounced those names correctly. Mm -hmm. And it also features Moby, who we think did an outstanding job throughout the film. He did. Sophia came to understand that humans, herself included, are literally destroying the planet on which we live. Humanity, she believes, is not only making the planet uninhabitable for human civilization, but also for countless other species with whom we share this world. She believes this is a crime like no other and feels a deep sense of concern, in particular for all the other animals who are being decimated by human activities. She made Endgame 2050 because she wants people to wake up to the gravity of the situation before it's too late. And I think she and her co-producer, Robert Rapfogel, have done that in a very creative way because most people can't imagine what the world would be like in 2050, which is only three decades away. So this film helps to really clarify what's waiting ahead for all of us. Endgame 2050 blends narrative and documentary to imagine a hypothetical future. People coping with harsh food and water shortages, runaway climate change, fishless oceans and civil unrest. Featuring Moby and prominent scientists, the film lays out the reality that unless we take responsibility and act urgently now, we are hastening our own destruction and that of virtually all other life on the planet. There you go, folks. So let us start off by saying that we really really enjoyed this film very much so i would give it how many out of 10 11. How many stars 11 <laughs> yeah i really i liked the focus yeah and i also liked the creative elements that you referred to yeah and i think you know at the end of this film uh we felt like it really it hit all the points you know like sometimes we've watched Cross the t's dotted the i's yeah it hit all the hit all the points that we would want it to hit so sometimes when we've watched similar documentaries we get to the end and we think ah oh, they missed this point or they should have done this or yes. they didn't talk enough about the animals or whatnot and we didn't feel that way we with didn't this feel documentary, that way did we? yeah in fact it really surprised us how far it went on some issues yes which we, we were pleasantly surprised absolutely mm. 
Also, uh, you mentioned, or one of us mentioned, that Sophia narrated the film. Yeah. And she obviously was the uh, writer, director, producer. Mm. and This nar- is her baby. Yeah, her baby. Yeah. And you could really tell that in her narration. Yes. So, for example, sometimes you'll have a, a paid narrator mm. that doesn't have that same affinity with the material. And you can just tell, I mean, they're doing a good job narrating, but they're just narrating. But when she narrated, because mm. it was her baby, as you said, um, it was so f- emotion-filled and filled with passion yeah. and enthusiasm. It was really coming from her concern. heart. concern. Uh, yeah. you know, coming from her heart, exactly. Yeah. And I think that just gave it um, an authenticity. Yes. That was, it, it Tangible, stood out. real. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's not to say that other films no, aren't authentic. not at all, not at all. It was just, this one was different. Part four is called Human Population Growth. Now, this is the most controversial part of the film. Yes. And, oh boy, how do we set this up? Um... You know, this is a topic that we often want to talk about, but we don't talk about because it's very controversial and it just really, really upsets people. And the backlash we have found over the years whenever we've raised anything is just too much. It, it's it's almost not worth it. And so we just step back and go, you know what, whatever. Could I, <laughs> do you think it would be fair to sum it up like, uh, there are certain topics at family get-togethers and what have you that you just yes. avoid. So no go would, would you say probably it's like politics, religion, veganism, veganism and human population growth? Maybe. Probably. Something like probably. that. Probably. <laughs> you, you know, you said that's what you would avoid talking to at a family dinner. Probably the same thing applies for social media. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, look, we want to discuss this part four very openly um, in this section of the podcast And we want to do it in a mature, respectful way. And although we've avoided speaking about this topic in detail for a long time, I feel like this film has really opened the conversation and I feel like they've said it. (laughs) Like, don't shoot the messenger, basically. You know, we are introducing this um, topic on our podcast show, but don't shoot the messenger. Just be open and listen to what is being discussed in the film by experts It's also recommended uh, as one of the courses of action that we can take, that viewers can take at the end of the documentary film to continue to raise this topic, raise the awareness of this issue, to talk about because it all begins with a conversation. We can't uh, can't change what we won't acknowledge, that type of thing. Exactly. Just like, you know, as you said, veganism is one of those topics that people don't like to go near. And when when it is raised by vegans, what happens? Carnists will like... Bam, shoot you down. No, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to talk about it. Even if you present veganism with uh, science and facts and logic yeah. and rationale. In a calm way. And that's how we feel when we talk about human population human growth. Human population growth. It's like no matter how we say it or what we say, we are, you know, so many times we've been called, uh, what do they call us? Uh, anti humans. Yeah. Those anti human vegans. Well, that's just like you're dismissing the facts. You're not being open-minded, just the way we criticize carnists for saying, oh, no, I don't want to watch Dominion. I want to keep eating animals. Well, you don't know the facts. You're not being open to it. You're not educating yourself and you're shooting the messenger. Yeah. And in many respects, sometimes when non-vegans accuse vegans of...